station of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. Woo. It's playoff type baseball from here on out. Absolutely. Gretchen up the middle. Base hit. This game is tied. Fam will score and Randall Gretchen comes through. Wong into center. The catch is made. Here comes a throw. The Cardinals win it. They take game three in dramatic fashion. The final of three to two. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. And Cardinals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The Cardinals with that dramatic win last night now find themselves two behind New York and San Francisco in the wild card. This afternoon it's game number four. Jim Hayes is here. That's Tim McCarver. I'm Dan McLaughlin. The regular season so many twists and turns you never know where it may go. Couple of weeks left in this regular season and here we are Tim two teams looking for the playoffs and they'll have starters today combined combined 12 starts in the major leagues. They rule five draft choice Suarez with 10 starts and for the Cardinals Alex Reyes with only two starts to his career and uh, what a game it should be. Wildness was a problem for Reyes a couple of appearances ago even though he won the game against the Cubs we'll be checking on that today. All right Alex Reyes gets the call today for St. Louis the young hard throwing right hander of the Cardinals the final game here in San Francisco the Giants and the cards coming up. Budweiser not backing down since 1876 this buds for you by Chevrolet.
Visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealer for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. A gorgeous day, a look at Alcatraz here in San Francisco. Jim Hayes, Tim McCarver, Dan McLaughlin with you. Sun is shining brightly in 84 degrees. From Alcatraz to Alex Reyes, who gets the start today. He is two and one this year. Albert Suarez, three and three for the Giants. And a huge game for both these teams. There's a look at Suarez. He was added to the Giants rotation in late June. Matt Cain went on the DL. Jake Peavy was on the DL. So Suarez was thrust into the rotation, and the Giants have lost his last four starts. One problem today for the outfielders in left field in particular for the first four or five innings will be the sun. It's a very high sky here, and fly balls tend to give. The left fielder and center fielder problems early in the game, then it swings into right field later in the game. It's Carpenter, Diaz, and Moss who homered here last night, followed by Piscotti, Yadier Molina, Jed Jerko, Randall Gritchick, Colton Wong, and the pitcher batting ninth, Alex Reyes. Where's the advantage in the lineup, Stan? I mean, the, the Cardinals have to be happy. Buster Posey isn't in, in the lineup. Here's a guy who was seven for nine, hit his first home run in two months. In game two. And Trevor Brown is the catcher today. So no posy. A scheduled day off, according to Bruce Bochy, as yeah. they'll head out on a road trip through LA and San Diego starting tomorrow. So Carpenter digs in, batting 274. He's popped 19 home runs, driven in 61. And the first pitch is taken for a ball. Carpenter is three for seven in the series. Couple of singles on Friday night. What a dramatic win it was for the Cardinals last night. We've been saying it so many times this year. Is that the win that springboards this team? Get into right center field. Denard Spann is there and makes the catch. Cardinals as a team so excited last night. They were hoping and wishing that last night was a doubleheader. One of the old try twi night doubleheaders so they could continue playing. That's how fired up they were. Around the horn is presented by Dobbs, Pagan, Span, and Pence in the outfield. Nunez, Crawford, Panic, and Belt on the infield, and Trevor Brown is behind the plate. Here's a lead Miss Diaz. And that's pulled fair inside the third baseline. And Diaz picks up a one out double here in the first. Jumping on that first pitch, looking for a fastball. And need a low tracer down the third baseline, just fair. Middle part of the plate, right over the bag. Good call by third base umpire Corey Blazer. So a double with one out for Diaz. Here's Brandon Moss, his 27th home run hit last night. The Cardinals have the third most extra base hits in all of Major League Baseball. Very dependent on that home run. And they haven't had many opportunities with runners in scoring position. Last week or so and certainly in this series. It's interesting when you look at the infield. This is not a defense that would be employed if there were nobody on base. But third baseman Eduardo Nunez has to stay in the normal third base position because the Cardinals have a guy on second base. Here's the one. Yeah, normally your third baseman would be closer towards where Crawford would be at normal right. position at short. It would be a total shift, and you're leaving the whole left side of the infield open. But you can't do that with Diaz at second base. If you did that, he'd steal third easily. And a high fly ball lifted out to deep left center. Span going back near the wall and makes the catch, tanking up Diaz from second to third. There's some ballparks that baseball is gone. Yep. Well, from a home run standpoint, the unfairness of AT&T Park here in San Francisco. Usually, the home runs are legitimate. They'd be out anywhere. 
It's about the spot that he hit that home run last night in game yes. three. Right. Piscotty is one for 11 in this series. Overall hitting 274, 21 home runs, 81 RBIs. One of the best, though, in baseball with runners in scoring position. The Giants pitching Stephen Piscotty differently than other teams going to the slider with Piscotty as opposed to the fastball inside. They've been very effective doing that so far. Here's a 1 0. Ground ball to third. That is fair. Throw to first in time on a hop to Brandon Bell. Cardinals strand their first runner of the afternoon. Half inning in the books. No score. Alex Reyes, the 22 year old, a two and one record. Both wins have come in relief against the Cubs. Last outing, four to third, six walks. And those six walks, a single game season high for a Cardinals pitcher this year, but he did pick up the win. The one thing about it, the Giants, with an impressive offense, in that they make young pitchers pitch and throw strikes. They're a very patient offense. Denard Spann back at the top of this lineup, followed by Angel Pagan, then Brandon Crawford, Hunter Pence riding an 11 game hit streak, Brandon Belt, Eduardo Nunez, Joe Panic, Trevor Brown, the catcher, batting eighth, and Albert Suarez, the pitcher, batting ninth. Spann is now four for his last nine after recording just two hits in his previous 41 at bats. We talked about how you take a pitch. Well, he's been doing that patient, and you can see he's starting to see the ball a little bit better. Yeah, I would think he'd do it against a young pitcher, 22 year old Alex Reyes. He's had 16 walks in 28 innings. However, none of those walks have come around to score. And a strike at 93 miles an hour from Reyes. We know he can get it up to triple digits. First pitch was a ball. There's a strike, so one and one. Span in his first season with the San Francisco Giants. It's a high fly ball out to left center. Randall Grichik drifting over to make the catch. Cardinals defensively here this afternoon. Moss in left, Gritchick in center, Stephen Piscotti in right. Jerko, Diaz, Wong, and Carpenter on the infield. Molina is behind the plate. Here's Angel Pagan. Last 17 games, just a 162 average. Woo. 
The Mets defeat Minnesota today at City Field in New York, so they are now the front runner at the moment in the wild card, a half game lead over San Francisco. The Cardinals two back of the Giants. Little tapper. Reyes off the mound and underhands to Carpenter for the out. We'll see how it plays out, but it almost looks like a concerted effort to back off on velocity for location here with Alex Reyes. It's early. We'll see if that uh, is the trend here today. Well, when you're thinking about the common sense standpoint, or from a common sense standpoint, it's a good park in which to do that. This is not a band box, as you said. Very, very difficult to hit the ball out of the park here. Brandon Crawford with a fly ball to center. And a six pitch first inning for Alex Reyes. That'll work. We move to the second, no score. Well, the Cardinals postseason push is with MLB.com at bat. Number one app for live baseball. Enjoy game day. Live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. MLB.com at bat on your favorite devices now. Let's turn to Tim's Toyota keys to the game. Ideally, the Cardinals and Mike Matheny would love to feed off last night's ninth inning. An inning in which the Cardinals scored two runs to win that game three to two. Dramatic game. Here's Molina riding a five game hitting streak. A walk in the ninth led to the winning run thanks to Molina. It was interesting how that whole thing developed. We talked about it going back last night to the hotel. There's a base hit into right field. You can make a case that the most important thing that happened in that inning was a stolen base by Tommy Pham. Because when he stole second, instead of trying to get Molina to hit into a double play, then you've got first base open, so you're inclined to pitch around, and he ends up walking. Pinch runner Jose Martinez ended up scoring the winning run. Bam with the tying run Martinez the winning run Cardinals held on 3 2 and it all got started by Jed Jerko in a base hit with one out. Bruce Bochy was seven outs away from a win. He went with six different relievers to try and get that victory. It was the 28th blown save which matches the franchise record for the Giants set in 2004 and 5. Casilla alone his ninth blown save. That ball scoots away from Trevor Brown. A throw to second and a nice pick there by Panic. 
And Molina saying he wants the Cardinals to take a look at this. Did not get a good read. Well, I think the best way to get the replay is to stay on second base and not come to the dugout. That's not selling it. But he doesn't break immediately. If you break immediately, you've got a much better chance. Everybody knows Molina is not a fast runner. He does want the replay. We'll see. He missed him. But did he tag him before that right foot got on the bag? The left foot went by the bag and the the right I think he tagged him on the left arm before the right foot made it. No replay. Here is Jed Jericho one ball one strike. Cardinals have publicly stated that next spring training base running is something they want to focus more on. First to third taking the extra base little things like that. Well they need it badly. On a hop to short Brandon Crawford. Out number two. The comeback for the Cardinals last night their sixth win this year when trailing after eight innings. And it was Randall Gritchick who had hit into two double plays prior to that ninth inning at bat that comes through. Instead of to the shortstop he hit it far enough to the left of Brandon Crawford a superb shortstop. And that tied the game won by Colton Wong on the sack fly. So two outs nobody on and Gritchick a swing and a miss. He was called back up second stint in the minor leagues back on August 11th. And since that time he's hit 288 10 homers he's driven in 24. The 10 home runs do get your attention. One ball and one strike. Dan you brought up the point that Alex Reyes backing off a little bit as far as his velocity today. Perhaps that's one thing that Randall Gritchick needs to do. You sacrifice power for contact. The 2-1. It's where the Giants are going to be. They are not coming inside intentionally on Randall Gritchick. So from a hitter standpoint what you try to do is bring that outside part of the plate and make it the middle of part of the plate and give them anything inside. The shift is on here for Gritchick normally see it with a left handed batter more and more though we're starting to see it with right handers. Yeah, It's kind of odd isn't it. Yeah. I mean they put three guys on the left side of the infield and they pitch Gritchick away. Three two. Get out of play. Colton Wong the on deck man. Three two grounded two short Crawford. A base hit by Molina. A race on a caught stealing Jerko and Gritchick round out to short no score.
injured his wrist in last night's game. With more on that, let's check in with Jim. Yeah, Adams was having himself quite the little game last night on base a couple of times with a walk and a single, then with runners at first and third in the third. He turned in a tremendous defensive play, turning two on a Denard span line drive. Adams injured his left wrist on the play. He was taken out of the game in the fifth. Mike Matheny saying Adams lobbied to stay in, but they saw something with his swing that didn't look right and they wanted to get him checked. Adams told me he got treatment this morning. They loosened up his wrist and he says he's good to go and Dan after Adams made that defensive play last night he showed more emotion than we've seen from him all season he was frustrated that uh, that he had to come out of the game. All right Jimmy thank you there's Brian Onora the home plate umpire shook up after that swing and a foul ball off the bat of Pence. Immediately the medical team of the Giants racing out onto the field. Yeah baseball finding out. At these foul tips once taken for granted shouldn't be. More and more we're finding out about concussions with those types of foul balls right. And the umpires obviously realizing the importance of this game. With the wild card within reach, you don't want Onora to have to leave because of a concussion syndrome and then have only three umpires. That would leave plays at second base suspect. Well, the crew chief is Laz Diaz, and he is racing to the umpire's room. Here at AT&T Park. You know what could help umpires is to wear the same type helmet that a catcher does. I agree. And and a plastic helmet that would defray the blow. But with that soft helmet, you know, if it hits the top of the mask, it digs in uh, to the front part of the head. That's your. I, I'm not a doctor, but the what is that? The prefrontal cortex, I believe. Well, you look at. Uh, Molina's helmet it is geared to basically not take the impact on full so it could deflect right. it a little bit. That's right. And you do see that more and more with today's day and age of catchers but not from the umpires. A few of them do wear that mask that you're talking about and that mm -hmm. will be it for Brian Onora. Hey it's terrifying I, I think from a personal standpoint that for about a decade of catching in the major leagues I used only a soft cap and there were times when because of the pitch I would duck my head uh, slightly and it was just enough to get over a two bar mask which were lighter they didn't have the cage mask back in the 60s but they had only two bars and when I ducked my head there were several times I'd say a handful of times five to ten maybe over a ten year period where it actually took the skin off the mm. middle of my head because I was wearing the soft cap. Well, well we have a moment Laz Diaz putting on the equipment will step aside no score here in the bottom of the second.
three-man umpiring crew. And one thing also to keep in mind is what does this do to Alex Reyes? He's not on he's not on the mound and rightly he went in the dugout so he's resting on, as are uh, all three outfielders Colton Wong and Jed Jerko are the only ones kneeling one kneeling one standing behind the mound Yadier Molina still out there but one of the keys uh, three umpires in a very very important game for both teams I would say this too only six pitches for Reyes in that first inning so it wasn't like he had a better understanding of this zone as opposed to Laz Diaz you know what I mean I mean if yeah. it happens midway yeah. in the game you, you have a pretty good feel for that strike zone and so it changes somewhat but you weren't used to Brian Onora anyway mm -hmm. yeah everything's new for Reyes right I'm sure Yadier Molina with the experience he has is going to make sure that Reyes is ready to go and not just throw a couple of pitches and his arm feels fine but are you locked in on the strike zone again. So here it was if you're just joining us a foul ball moments ago off the bat of Hunter Pence and it catches the home plate umpire Brian Onora so his day is through medical team of the Giants checking with him Laz Diaz hustled into the umpires room that was it for Onora and Diaz the crew chief will go behind the plate so it'll be a three man umpiring crew when we come back we'll step aside again we're in the bottom of the second and there's no score the Giants and the Cardinals. to uh, get loose and warm up Laz Diaz is now the home plate umpire a look at our Academy Sports and Outdoor leaderboard and it ties into you know the foul balls and the tips that hit a catcher whether it be in the mask or the knee whatever the case may be but look at all the innings caught for Yadier Molina here this year he is first in the National League he's on pace to set a career high he's caught now in six straight and in 13 of the last 14 games. Boy. And we've mentioned it many many times it's amazing that he has maintained his off offensive prowess with all those innings caught. So here we go Hunter Benz riding an 11 game hitting streak no balls and a strike. One ball and one strike. Pence pulls it foul. Well, our guys in the truck uh, always on the alert down there. They they bring up a fair question. What if there is a foul tip to Laz Diaz now? You can't go to two umpires. What happens? Replay certainly helps. Maybe, maybe the importance of a game the last two weeks of the season 
The Kane National Lynch. League should carry an extra umpire. Nothing wow. wrong with that. Pence is swinging a miss at the first strikeout for Reyes. I would say this, you'd become more dependent on replay. So if you add the two umpires out there, game is going to continue. Mm -hmm. Your home plate umpire makes the call fair or foul on balls hit down the line. You know, the first and third base line and your second base umpire or base umpire would have to make those calls, but you'd have a little help from re, uh, replay too. Yeah, the, the problem with your first and third base umpires, who goes to second base on plays there? Exactly. Here's the 01. And then if your replay system goes down, well, then you're really in trouble. Well, if it's first and second, that third base umpire is going to go to second base, and then you have the home plate umpire responsible for the ball down the line. And that's normally by the the, the umpire down the third base line. So it, it changes considerably the, the scope of the umpires. Well, good start here for Alex Reyes. He struck out Pence. Brandon Belt, a little comebacker to him. And efficient to get five outs, only 14 pitches. Last night's game featured something very unusual for the Cardinals. They had five one three putouts, and they already have two in the first five batters with the Giants this afternoon. Here's Eduardo Nunez picked up from the Minnesota Twins. 37 steals this year. Ground ball deep in the hole, and with his speed. No chance. Nunez diving into first base. First hit for the Giants. I think of all the dives that base runners make, diving into first is the most dangerous. Break a hand, break a thumb. A spike on your hand? Sure. So two outs, and it brings in Joe Panic. The second baseman of the Giants who's hitting 246, 10 home runs. He is driven in 58. Mentioned that the Mets have already won, so a half game in front of San Francisco in the wild card. Two and a half in front of the Cardinals. And a quick move, and they. I think Carp have gotten him. Carp Carpenter pointed to the dugout telling David Bell take a look at that he may have been out and if you Reyes you want to have moderate attention to the speed at first base it's close and the Cardinals I think they will challenge this but sure enough as we say that Mike Matheny says Let's take a look. That's the quickest move I've seen by Reyes in his pitching performances so far this year. I know you get asked all the time about how to make this game better. And I, I know you'd like to see some tweaks here with replay, wouldn't you? A lot. A lot. I think baseball's got a long way to go. You want to see the play right. But you'd like to see it in maybe a fashion that's done a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. I think the players feel that way. Those here in the ballpark would say that. There's some grumbling you can hear in the stands right now. No fall of his own, but Brian Onora, there was about a five minute delay there. Sure. And now you have this stoppage in play. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we forget we are in the entertainment business. We're here to entertain the fans. And I know this sounds strange. Sometimes entertainment takes precedence. I mean, the the accuracy, the umpires have have always prided themselves on accuracy and getting plays right. So safe call at first base. The call stands. It's one of the major concerns for Rob Manfred just the speed and the pace of play making this a game that's more enjoyable if they can. So two outs runner at first panic is the hitter.
How about the Mets losing Jacob DeGrom, who was supposed to start today, won't pitch again this year, ulnar nerve. Matt Harvey, Steven Matz, Zach Wheeler all have missed time. And yet here they are in the first spot in the wild card as we speak. Even Noah Syndergaard has a sore shoulder. He's still pitching. If you're Reyes again, don't pay too much attention to the runner at first base. Reyes has just dominated the right handed batters. They are 8 for 61 coming into play today. Lefty's a little bit better, but not much. Here's a 1 0. Falling behind. That's what happens when a young pitcher pays too much attention to the runner at first base. The guy with the stick in his hands, the most important. Brian McCann, our producer, did call the umpiring crew in New York and said, What would happen if, unfortunately, Laz Diaz had to leave or another umpire? And they said, well, We'd go with a two man crew. That's the way it would be. Similar to the old softball softball league. <laughs> two umpires. The 2 0 pitch. Looked to be a pretty good pitch, 3 0. Panic is one for his last 21. And there's your first walk of the afternoon. Buster Posey, as we mentioned earlier, it's a scheduled day off for him, so with and without. Posey when he's in the lineup it's a different team different offensively different record mentioned the Giants will head to the Dodgers tomorrow play at Dodger Stadium Madison Bumgarner on the mound there's strike one what a matchup tomorrow night Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw the Cardinals head to Denver. Carlos would, Martinez and Tyler Anderson of the Rockies. That would be the third start off the disabled list for Kershaw. Popped up. Shading from the sun, the shortstop. Diaz. And he makes the play. We play two, and there's no score. Baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. And by your local Volkswagen dealer. Cable car tracks. 
What a city, huh? What a city. Get that feeling of Steve McQueen going down the railroad tracks in that little The Bullets car, that movie The Bullet, about 30 years ago. One of the, one of the great movie for chase scenes ever. You have this beautiful setting. Sun is out. Temperature is warm. The Indian summer is what they call it. In September and October here in San Francisco. Nights aren't quite as cool as you may have early portion of the schedule. AT&T Park located in the China Basin here in San Francisco. Here's Colton Wong drove in the winning run last night. Also had a single and a walk. He's starting to find his name in there just about every day in that Cardinals starting lineup. One ball, one strike. Good breaking ball. One and two. The Hyundai pitch arsenal on this right hander. Fastball, slider, the curve, and change. Well, if you wonder about the importance of drafting well and developing players, these two teams can attest to that. They have dominated, for the most part, the National League the last half decade or so. The Cardinals have 20 players on their Major League roster as Wong strikes out that originally signed with their club. That's second in baseball. San Francisco with 18 that originally were drafted or signed. Wong thought that curveball went around the plate, but as you see, it didn't. Here's Reyes, who is one for eight to start his major league career. Two. Now don't pop it. Some of those rocks could be a little sharp out there. Crawford in the hole with time. Ray is running, shows off the arm. Now that's a way to take in a game. You, you got your radio with you. You listen to Dave Fleming and uh, John Miller on the radio call. You wait for a splash hit out of McCovey Cove and take in the sunshine here in San Francisco. Go, go ahead and ask me if I can row a boat. Ask me. Hey, Tim, can you row a boat? No, canoe. Come on. Come on. You have of course been it's bad. You have supposed been supposed to be bad. Suspended again. <laughs> you were suspended for an out last night, and it continues here in game four. It's terrible. <laughs> it is bad, isn't it? A man as well versed, well read as you, and that's what you come up with? I think my grandson told me that joke 11 years ago when he was four. <laughs> the boaster? The boaster. You got it, baby. Those two would be a, a candidate for kiss cam in the seventh inning. <laughs> I'm not going there. Remember last night? My gosh. They were getting it, getting it on here at AT&T Park. <laughs> oh, gosh. The 2-2. Two -two. Coming up here to Carpenter, fly to center. Start this game. Check swing did not go. This Suarez throwing a, a bevy of different speed breaking balls to left handed batters. He threw two to Wong. He's thrown two to Carpenter. Three and two the count with two outs and nobody on. 
Now time is cold. Hanging breaking ball and that's driven into the corner in right field. Carpenter to second base. And St. Louis has their third hit of the afternoon and two of the three hits have been doubles. Going to that curveball route once too often to Matt Carpenter. Maybe once or twice but that third time is a charm for Matt that ball just hanging there saying hit me hard and he did. Next time you want to grab seats get the StubHub app not only will you find seats you'll love whenever you want you can find the best seat for your buck when you sort by the best value so get the StubHub app today. Talked about it in this series Tim it's not what the Cardinals have done with runners in scoring position the numbers are poor there but the lack of opportunities mm -hmm. not many times have they had this. Here's Diaz who doubled his first time up and cranks one out to deep left field. Pagan is back. Gone! Two run homer on Ledmus Diaz number 16. Sometimes you have success. Throwing curveballs to the eighth place hitter like Wong. He struck him out on one, and you become confident in the wrong thing. And the wrong thing is the curveball. First to Matt Carpenter on a 2 2 count. Breaking ball, double down the right field line. On the first pitch, slider just hanging there, and Diaz took care of it. Moss hits it out of play. Two to nothing, Cardinals. Diaz is two for two with a double and now his 16th home run he's up to 61 RBIs. for two little celebration here for the Cardinals the home run by Diaz midway through three two nothing See Fox's new drama pitch tomorrow night at 6:30. Fox 2 and Fox Sports Midwest present a free advanced screening inside Ballpark Village on the big screen at Fox Sports Midwest Live. Free giveaways. Then right after that, the Cardinals game from Denver. A two-nothing lead for St. Louis. A home run by Aledmis Diaz with two outs. That brought in Carpenter. 
And it's 2 nothing. Here's Albert Suarez and a fastball at 94 for strike one. Suarez is hitting 158. Pitcher spot here, then Denard Span and Angel Pagan. 0 oh 2. Not just the uh, National League, we focus on the wild card, but the American League very tight as well as Suarez puts it in play. Little bouncer hit to Matt Carpenter. Baltimore and Toronto have the two spots currently in the American League wild card. They're tied. Detroit, Houston, Seattle, all three back. Yankees are four back, and they'll try to avoid being swept tonight against the Red Sox. That game killed the Yankees the other night. That yeah. three run home run by Hanley Ramirez. I think the Red Sox scored, what, six in the ninth, something like that. Wow. Dylan Patantis, too, it was off of him. Mm hmm. Who more times than not has been very, very good this year for the Yankees. Here's Span who fly to center first time up. It's a different look to that bullpen now than it was at the beginning of the year with Miller gone and of course a role as Chapman with the Chicago Cubs. Chapman may wind up back with the Yankees sure. next year. He's sure. a free agent to be and has indicated he wouldn't mind going back to New York. Good off speed pitch. What that means is he left it. He left the Yankees in good graces, hoping that the Yankees would be the highest bidder for his services. He's a good businessman. Yankees have money to spend. Oh yes, always have. One and two. Reyes, 27 pitches. We keep an eye on that because. You worry about the pitch count, the walks. He's been efficient so far. And he picks up his second strikeout. Even though I will say, Derek Lilliquist telling me about a half an hour before game time that they are not really concerned about his pitch count. He's young, he's strong, big game. I think the big game takes prominence over the pitch count. Unless it gets out of hand. I mean, I'm not talking 120, 125, but over 100. I mean, he's a big man. Great delivery, uses his legs. He's different as a young pitcher. Good breaking ball to Pagan. Bounce back to Reyes, his first time up. 0 for 1. The Cardinals signed him. He was 170 pounds. Really? Get out of here. He's grown two inches, too. Mm. 2010, Reyes moved from New Jersey to his grandparents' home in the Dominican. He was 17 at that time. He was throwing about 87 miles an hour. His Moss will give chase. And it's out of play. By the end of that year, he was hitting 94. Two years later, he's hitting 100. Now both look grandparents. Look. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Danny. Pardon me. Well, both grandparents lived in San Cristobal in the uh, Dominican. The mayor of that town is former major leaguer Raul Mondesi, and he worked out with Mondesi's kid, who's a top prospect with the Royals. Oh, that's a great story. Wow. But I mean, look at the frame of the man. Those big legs. Ground ball. Jed Jerko. And a 1 2 3 inning for Alex Reyes. Looks sharp here early on. 2 0 as we head to the fourth.
fans take home a bobblehead of the 2006 World Series MVP David Eckstein courtesy of Coca-Cola and Deerbergs can also start planning ahead with your 2017 Cardinals magnet schedule that's presented by Shelter Insurance so don't miss it last weekend of the regular season the cards and the Pirates and a bobblehead of David Eckstein. We're in the fourth. Stephen Piscotti, Yadier Molina, Jed Jerko. Piscotti grounded out to third, first time up. Cardinals with a 2 0 lead. Just to finish the thought on Alex Reyes, Major League Baseball actually bars prospects who leave the U.S. to become free agents from signing. It's a one year, full calendar year. So, you know, teams can get in there and Meet grandma, meet grandpa, mom, dad, the player, and try to entice him with their particular team. The Cardinals were very worried they were going to lose Alex Reyes, but he told me that once the Cardinals initially made the move and the investment of time and finding out about him and his family, he said, I always knew St. Louis was the place I wanted to sign with. And the Cardinals gave him $950,000. That's a pretty good investment. Investment of time and money. Yep. The 2 2. Cardinals would love to see Stephen Piscotti get started. One for 12 in this series. And the Giants' uh, right handers have made him look about as bad as any four game stretch this year, in my view. He's been very consistent. And you're right. This has been one of the series where his impact has not really been felt. Mm -hmm. You could make a case to him because he's played just about every day. He's been healthy. He's been their best player this year. Mm -hmm. Consistency, clutch hitting, good arm in right field, excellent fielder. You see him play every day you realize he's a very good defensive player as he draws a walk and that'll be the first issue by Albert Suarez. <laughs> Yadier Molina is single to right then caught stealing on a ball that got away from Trevor Brown. Tried to advance to second base and was thrown out. The importance of last night's game, make a case it's the biggest win of the year for the Cardinals. 14 games to go. And instead of being four out, you're two out. And from the Giants' perspective, we've talked a lot about the Cardinals and does it carry over to today? But for the Giants, losing a game in that fashion again is crushing. Tough to recover. Molina hits it down the left field line and foul. It's almost like here we go again. They can't figure out a guy to to get that final out or really the last three outs of a game. Bruce Bochy was saying before the game today that Casilla they're going to try to give him another chance. It won't be today. He's pitched in back to back games. But you may see law you could see Strickland. Find somebody to get them that save in the final three outs of a game. A fly ball lifted to left. Angel Pagan with the catch. Back to first goes Piscotti. Well, of all the relievers that he brought into the game, the one thing you have to question is the one that he did not leave in the game, and that was Derek Law. It was everything has advertised the Giants are high on him. You said last night he may be the future start uh, closer star closer. And he certainly has the equipment to do that. But he pitched only two batters last night. I think he threw five pitches. Strike one on Jerko grounded out to short first time up. You talk about it being a team effort from fam. Martinez Carson Kelly going in the game at the end and also your first base coach they had slow times Bill Miller had slow times 
on Casilla. That's one of the reasons why they ran. They meaning Tommy Pham. Out at second, out at first. Double play off the bat of Jerko. We move to the bottom of the fourth, and Aled Miss Diaz, two run homer, the difference so far. Brandon Crawford grew up a Giants fan. His dad was a season ticket holder at Candlestick. Seats on the third base line. That's Brandon Crawford, the now famous photo when he was four years old. And the Giants, the thought was they were leaving, headed to Tampa Bay. He reenacted that photo recently. Isn't that a great shot? Uh, you and I were trying to figure out uh, who Mr. White was. The only answer for that, Bill White was the president of the National right. League. At the time, perhaps that was the Mr. White to whom they are referring. It was the second time that the Giants threatened to go to Tampa Bay. The first time was actually that was the White Sox back in 77. So it was not the Giants. Diaz backing up to make the catch. You know, so far, no problem with the sun, that high sky. We talked about it in the first inning. His dad actually said he took Crawford when he was nine months old to the playoffs in 1987. That playoff series was against the Cardinals. Cardinals eventually won it in seven games, then lost to the Twins in seven games in the 1987 World Series. Who could ever forget a one flap down? Jeffrey Leonard, you saw him the other night. Game one, right? That's right. Thursday. <laughs> saw him just behind us in the uh, the hallway, and I said, hey, one flap down. Kind of gave me a look, and I said, I'm from St. Louis. I said, oh. <laughs> After he hit a home run, he would keep one of his arms immobile, almost like it was in a cast. Left arm. 0 2 pitch to Hunter Pence. Struck out his first time on a breaking ball. Reyes has struck out two. He's allowed one walk and one hit. Fly ball, right field. Piscotti. Out number two, greater coverage of Major League Baseball is brought to you by T Mobile. With two outs. The hitter will be Brandon Belt. The Indians last night, eight relievers combined for 10 scoreless innings, and they win in a walk off. The Mets win today, and Albert Pujols, 14th season with 30 or more home runs. Dan, I am often asked when a team faces a young pitcher like this for the first time, who has the advantage? I think 
slight advantage toward the pitcher, generally speaking. More times through the orders, second, third time, becomes more difficult, of course. Things start evening out a little bit. You can look at all the video and the charts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Hitters will tell you until they get in a batter's box, they're, they're just not sure. Mm -mm. And that's where the edge goes to the pitcher. 0-2 pitch. Belt pulls it foul. Brandon rounded back to Reyes first time up. And he's caught looking. Third strikeout for Alex Reyes. We head to the fifth. Two nothing Cardinals. Cove and that's uh, Frank getting that shot right there beautiful shot well last time we saw the Mets the talk of the uh, the local media in New York is that uh, maybe the Mets need to fire Terry Collins yeah right going the other way Randall Gritchick Terry Collins with all the injuries to their young stars and that pitching staff has done a really good job only in New York you lived it you went through it and eventually I was canned by two teams <laughs> <laughs> so what move on it Life, happened life's huh? too short <laughs> hang with them <laughs> what can you do right hey here's Colton Wong Runner goes, hit and run was on. Only play for Suarez is to go to first. I like that. The Cardinals start a little, little movement there on the bases. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, Colton Wong did not have a good pitch on which to hit. That ball was about six inches outside. It looked like a quasi pitch out. But what a manager does when he thinks about putting on a hit and run. Is there are saying it doesn't matter about the speed of the runner. It's whether the hitter ha makes contact consistently and whether the pitcher can throw strikes. That situation, he didn't throw a strike. Reyes, first pitch, a fly ball into right. Richick at second base will tag up. He's at third with two outs and an RBI opportunity now for Matt Carpenter. 
Back by popular demand. Don't miss Grateful Dead Night at Bush Stadium. Tim will be there. It's Monday, September 26th. And the purchase of the special theme ticket, you'll receive an exclusive Grateful Dead inspired Cardinals t-shirt. Cardinals.com slash theme. Well, I am a quasi deadhead. Are you? Quasi, yep. I loved listening to Jerry Garcia. Didn't necessarily approve of their lifestyle. In those days, everybody was commenting, commenting on their lifestyle and the lifestyles of others. In fact, my lifestyle was. <laughs> but this has been a really reflective day for you. Yes, hasn't it? It has. Let's see, fired in New York, fired again. Hey, when you're canned, you're canned, pal. <laughs> 16 years with the Mets, three years with the Yankees. And now here. Adios, baby. Here's a 102 Carpenter. I was surprised to hear that you're a deadhead or quasi a quasi deadhead. I mean, you know, I like some of the some of their music. You were listening to a lot of uh, Sinatra. Yes, for Here. the game today. Yep. Something about a Sunday morning in Sinatra. Here's a one-one. Carpenter has doubled. That was a breaking ball. Left it up in the zone. He hammered it for a double into the corner and right. And then was brought in on a two run homer with two outs by Diaz back in the third. Two balls and one strike. That'll find the seats and out of play. Normally Matt Carpenter would not swing at a ball like that but with the runner in scoring position he expands the strike zone just a bit maybe an inch or two the ball just off the plate away but nobody were on I don't think Matt swings at that ball two balls and two strikes it's the old Ernie Banks theory Ernie used to say I want the RBI not the guy on deck struck him out Second strikeout for Albert Suarez. Midway through five. Cardinals on top. A behind the scenes view, news, features, and more this week. Sneak peek at the pages of the 2016 yearbook. Behind the scenes look at the Fox Sports Midwest TV truck. Cardinals Insider brought to you by your Mid America Chevy dealers. That's after the game right here on Fox Sports Midwest. Nunez, Panic, and Brown. 
Nunez has not tried it yet, but he will bunt for a base hit. Use that tremendous speed of his. Alex Reyes has only allowed one hit. It's an infield base hit by Nunez in the second. With his speed, he becomes extra important to retire as the leadoff batter. Remember, this was his first action in this series on Thursday since the previous Sunday because he had been out with a bad back. He missed four games with that bad back and looked like, to use our favorite modern day word, that he may have tweaked that back. So he may have tweaked his back, but he seems to be okay. The 0 1 pitch. As we said last night, there are certain players who say, I want to give my team every chance to win. Eduardo, no doubt, one of those guys. Ooh, up and in. Two balls and one strike. Held up, and he was committed to swing if that ball were just a little bit better. Looks like he is a guy who goes up there and hacks. No taking. Two and two. Ground ball. Diaz can't get there. It's off his glove. And Nunez has the two base hits for the Giants here today. Hey, congratulations to our own Al Raboski. He'll be inducted into the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame this Thursday. If you'd like to attend, head to stlshof.com. Also a very special award for Bill DeWitt III. Coming up at the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. Congratulations to Al. All right. There's Joe Panic. Well, here's a situation we talked about earlier, Tim, where you worry a little bit too much about the runner. And that's the example. Four straight balls by worrying about the runner the first time he was at first base with two outs. And now with nobody out, Reyes throws one away. His second air this year. As we said, you give moderate attention to the guy at first. That's not moderate attention. You've got a two-run lead. Bottom part of the order coming up. Concentrate on the hitters. I'm not sure if that throw is that offline or just Carpenter didn't pick it up. Regardless, runner at second base for Joe Panic. They're going to change that air. It's not on Reyes. It'll be on Carpenter. So Matt Carpenter, air number 13. Well, we talked about how the sun here affects the outfielders. It can also affect a guy like Matt Carpenter, particularly when it's coming from left field like that. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Pulled foul. We well, talked about the, the bullpen issues, Tim, of this team for the Giants. Also in the second half, they're hitting just 227 with runners in scoring position. Going to the count. Time granted late. See, Reyes still worried about the guy at second base. You know, you got a hitter in the in the hole, 0 and 2. But what it does, it upsets your rhythm, your flow. Very important. Your cadence as a pitcher.
One ball and two strikes. See, in delivering that pitch, he was almost looking at the runner for too long a period of time and not picking up Molina. You could see it. Watch. See that one nanosecond of looking at the runner. Forget him. Fly ball. Piscotti makes the catch. Runner will tag. That's Nunez from second to third. That was an almost dive into third base. He was going to dive and then decided to stand up. Stuff like that can cause an injury. Well, this is interesting how the Giants may want to play this as Nunez makes his way to third. But you have the eighth place hitter here in Trevor Brown. Then the pitcher spot. So if you pitch around Brown, Bruce Bochy, knowing the importance of this game, ton of guys in his bullpen may go to that pen and pinch hit for his pitcher. Guys hitting eighth for a reason. Go get him. Got a two run lead. You don't pitch around anybody. Shallow center. Richard with the catch. And Nunez will stay put at third. Big out. Connor Gillespie will pinch it for Suarez. Connor hoping that this afternoon he performs a little better than last night, making the last out of the game with two out and two on. Swung at the first pitch. Yeah, popped it up. Game over. So runner at third. The tying run at the plate, and here is Gillespie. He's five for his last 30. First pitch, popped it up again. Foul territory. Jerko is there. Reyes out of a jam here in the fifth. game that's Sunday October 2nd fan appreciation weekend you'll get a Cardinal magic schedule courtesy of shelter free ticket voucher for next season and a ticket to Six Flags Day and a Prairie Farms ice cream Sunday all in the Ford Plaza tickets at Cardinals.com slash promotions well that's a reason to come to a game Can't think of a better reason if I were 12 or 13. I think I was 5 through 22. That's why I'm doing this for a living. Corey Guerin is the new pitcher. 
in relief of Suarez. Five innings, two runs on five hits, struck out one, walked one, and gave up the two run homer to Diaz back in the third. It's our Chevy call to the pen. We see it all the time, don't you? In September with the expanded rosters, you have so many in your pen. If you get a shot offensively, most managers take it. Now, if it's Madison Bumgarner or you know somebody of that ilk, no, they stay in the game, but not with your spot starter or number no. five. No. Good slider from Garen. Players have said for I guess the last hundred years, get a guy like Garen in there, and everybody'd say, "All right, all you sinker ball hitters, <laughs> here he is." Got one of the predominantly sinker slider pitchers in the National League. Fastball just missed. Two and one. Did miss 34 games this year at a shoulder strain. But he's given up 15 runs in his last 12 and a third. The 2 1. You can see with that pitch right there it gets him in trouble. If he gets underneath it too much, it just spins. Yes, yeah, but that frisbee effect flattens out. That's why slider ball pitchers try to stay above the ball perhaps more than any other pitch. The 2 2. Hold foul. Well, the Cardinals on the flip side have to be thrilled so far with Alex Reyes. Just two hits allowed as you get a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal for the right handed reliever of the Giants. You know, with Reyes, you, you're watching him last time, can't throw a strike. Mm -hmm. And today he's effective. I think a lot has that uh, has to do with his mindset. I mean, he's coming in to pitch against the Chicago Cubs out of the bullpen, trying to do too much probably. Ends up walking six, but he did win the game. The 2 2. And a strikeout of Diaz. First time he's been retired today. This is a good matchup, no doubt, for Brandon Moss right here. Sinker ballers have to be, have to keep the ball down to be effective. Moss, a good low ball hitter, can rake that ball down and in. Neutralize that by throwing him sliders, but it's not the same slider that you throw to right handed batters. Good sinker away. The reason for that is that the slider to from a right handed pitcher to a right handed batter, the good one is low and away. The same spot against a left handed batter, the ball's down and in. That's a horrible area to left handed batters. 0-1 pitch. Moss has fly to deep left center. Also hit a soft liner to third against the shift and a very good play by Nunez. Outfield is straight away and deep. Shift on the infield. Out of play. One ball and two strikes. And he gets Moss to chase a pitch in the dirt, picks up his second strikeout. That was a changeup to get Brandon Moss. Second strikeout for Garen. With two outs, brings in Steven Piscotti. 
Corey Guerin out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Last year, a September call up. And he's another one of these pitchers that's recovered from Tommy John. Had that two years ago. Ball one. Mentioned the Mets have already won. They defeated the Twins at City Field in New York. So their lead in the wild card as we play is a half game. If the Cardinals can win this game, they'd be one back of San Francisco. But the Cardinals headed to the Rockies and the Giants hooking up with the Dodgers first of three tomorrow night. The Scotty grounded out to third and also walked. And the 1 0 pitch to the Cardinals right fielder. That was wicked right there. The slider kept on going away, away, away. One and two. Two pitch, two and two. The Cardinals, that series, it starts tomorrow. Carlos Martinez, game one. Adam Wainwright lined up for game two. Luke Weaver, game three. All three will be on Fox Sports Midwest. Off day Thursday, then we head to Chicago. The 2 2. Strikes out the side. Here in any number six. 2 0 Cardinals. Top of the lineup. Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinals pitching coach, has loaned out his boat, apparently. Lily. <laughs> what a way to spend an afternoon, huh? 
Beautiful just, day here in San Francisco. Just gorgeous. Very few white caps on the water. The top of the lineup. Span, Pagan, and Crawford for the Giants against Alex Reyes. Reyes has allowed just two base hits. Cardinals haven't done much offensively here today. It's a two run homer by Diaz, the difference. St. Louis with five hits. Coming into play today, it's been nine straight games in which they've been held to single digits in hits and games. Next pitch to Span is a base hit in the right. Brings in Angel Pagan, who is 0 for 2. Pair of ground outs. The Boda power stats with Pagan digging in. Highest line drive percentage. And Pagan on that list, along with Brandon Belt. He's grounded back to Reyes, grounded out to Jerko at third. 0 for 2. Span with 12 stolen bases this year. Cardinals perspective it is fun watching this young man pitch the promise of the future and what that holds and the promise of now too. Yeah the future is now you're right. Hopeful get a ground ball right here. You've heard so much about him Cardinals number one prospect. For basically the last three years. Alex Reyes. Amped it up to 95. Reyes spot not due for five spots in the Cardinals lineup. Speed range, he's hit 98, the low of 75 today. Yeah, and the 95 mile an hour fastball doesn't tell. Uh, the whole story. I mean, you saw a big league hitter get overwhelmed with a fastball inside, and it was 95. So, not all 95 mile an hour fastballs are the same. Here's the 0 2. Struck him out. Four strikeouts for Reyes. Got him with a changeup. First two pitches inside, and then the changeup gets begun. Tim, you've seen a team that's come back in 1964 after a great collapse. Being on teams that have had big leagues, you know, what's it like right now, the pressure that the Giants are feeling after being the best team in baseball in the first half and now, you know, losing games late, the manner in which they're losing them? I don't think they're feeling any more pressure than the Cardinals right now. And this is a tough outfit. These guys won in 2010, 12, and 14. Always keep that in mind, and they've got a guy at the helm who knows what he's doing, as do the Cardinals. Want to know on Crawford with a runner at first. You know, I mean, you understand that these are not normal games. You say, well, each game, if you lose it, uh, that's a two game swing. All games are two game swings. The difference being that there are only, what, 13 left after today for the Cardinals. And the Mets winning puts pressure on both these teams. Can't get too far ahead of yourself. You've got to keep things in perspective. Whether you're the Giants or the Cardinals. 3 0. Hunter Pence is on deck. That surprised me a bit. 
Not that it wasn't the right thing to do to have Crawford swing at that 3 0 pitch. I thought Bruce Bochy, who flashed that sign, by the way, uh, would go under the assumption that you're trying to get Alex Reyes a little wild. 3 0 count, even though the pitch was a strike. Good change up on three balls and one strike. Now it's full. This is going to get any major league hitter to see a young pitcher that strong throw a 3 1 changeup for game time hitter. 3 2 pitch. Runner goes. Little tapper that rolls fair. And no play for Reyes, and he throws it away. Throw it right into the stands. You could see Molina telling Reyes, don't throw, don't throw. He did, and it's a mistake. A big mistake. Molina doing everything in his power but tackling Reyes. <laughs> yeah, he was. No, no, no. And he air mailed it. So it'd be a base hit, then an error. Runners at second and third, and Hunter Pence coming up, and a base hit could tie this game. Made a good pitch to Crawford, too. Well, sometimes hitters hit the ball where nobody is, and that's what Crawford did. There's nothing you can do. Eat it. First and seconds, a lot bigger with the two run lead. Then runners on the second and third and one out. And now this crowd comes alive with Pence. He's over two, struck out on a curve, and also flied out to right. What a test for young Alex Reyes. The first pitch. Check swing, he went. Strike one. It's the Cardinals' second air today. Carpenter had an air on a pickoff throw back in inning number five. Here's the 0 1. 0 and 2. Back in the fifth, pitching out of trouble. It's Trevor Brown. And then with two outs, Gillespie would pop out and nowhere to, for him to go. Pitched out of trouble, trying to do it here. The 0 2 pitch. One and two. George Cantos is throwing in the Giants' pen. No activity for the Cardinals. Pitch count just at 67 for Reyes here today. Here's a 1 2. Check swing and he struck him out. First base unoccupied, so Molina makes the throw to Carpenter and a huge strikeout for Alex Reyes. Molina making sure that he was way, way outside. Talk about the exuberance of a, of a hitter. Ball in the dirt. Molina has an easy throw to finish off Hunter Pence. Now Brandon Belt, who is 0 for 2, rounded back to Reyes and also was called out on strikes and a good changeup back in the fourth. Tell you, actually, Reyes started his windup there and then Belt backed off. I mean, that was very close to a balk to start. I think he'd be better off throwing from a stretch here. Inside for ball one. Two and zero. Oh. 
Nunez, who has a couple of hits, waits on deck. Two balls, no strikes on Belt. This big crowd is ready to erupt here in San Francisco. Hold foul. Two and one. Matt Bowman trotting down to the Cardinals pen. Got away with a 2 0 fastball. And I'll guarantee you, Belt is geared for another heater. Good time for a changeup. 2 1. Just missed. He got the fastball. Call me, Dan. Looked to be pretty good. Looked high enough. A 3 1 pitch, Reyes to belt. Change up. As you mentioned earlier, 3 1 change up from a 22 year old, not too shabby. That'll, that'll get a lot of swings and misses from veteran hitters. Huge pitch in this game right here. Three and two on Belt. Runners at second and third. And Belt takes a ball low. Bases loaded for Nunez. Second walk by Reyes. Nunez two for two, an infield hit. And then had a ground ball sharply hit off the glove of Diaz and into center field. Two for two. First pitch to him. Breaking ball. And a high fly ball out to left, battling the Sun Moss. He's got it. Reyes, some emotion. He pitches out of this jam here in the sixth. And the San Francisco Giants still off the board. It's 2 0. Molina, Jericho, and Grichik. Reyes has pitched out of a couple of jams, and last night it was the Cardinals winning in dramatic fashion. That base hit off the bat of Grichik, tied it up, and then pulled along the sack fly to bring in the winning run. For all intents and purposes, a must win for the Cardinals that pulled them to start a play today to within two games, a win here this afternoon. You're within one. So comeback wins. Kia in the driver's seat. The Cardinals with 12, and it all started with Jed Jerko last night. You talk about that must win. The players laugh about that. Let's see. 
They'll say, uh, what's a big game? Is today a big game? They'll say that in the middle of, J of June. They'll say it in late April. Is this a big game or was yesterday a big game? Last night was a big game. Yes. <laughs> there was ever a must win game. Last night was it. Here's Yadier Molina. Second inning of work for Corey Guerin. Molina one for two, base hit to right, and also fly to left. Impressive in that inning, Reyes with the off speed pitches. The pitch to Nunez is a breaking ball, may have gotten away with it, but Nunez got underneath it. But it gave him a, a different look at breaking ball. He hadn't thrown Nunez at breaking ball all day. He got hits. Infield hits on two fastballs. 2 0. Two balls and one strike. Crowd today 41,324. 4 1 3 2 4. Three and one. Thing in big games and close games, you notice the play slows down palpably, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Think about playoff baseball. How long those games take? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Contos back up and throwing now in the Giants' pen. Three-one pitch to Yadier Molina. Molina looking back at Las Diaz and asking if that pitch was a strike. It was. Thing about Garen to a right handed batter, he can either go get a 3 2 count, he can go fastball or slider. You can't lock in on one pitch. Three two. Molina with a fly ball into right center. Denard Span under it. Makes the catch for out number one. Jed Jerko 0 for 2 today. Grounded out to short. Grounded into a 5 4 3 double play. And so many teams around baseball would love to be in the Cardinals' position, Giants' position, where games in late September mean something. Every pitch so important. Giants were eliminated by the Dodgers last year on September 30th. Actually, actually it was the 26th of September. On the 25th, that's when Mike Leake had that shutout, his first career shutout, pitching for the Giants. Oh, one pitch to Jerko. Well, Bowman is uh, throwing. He continues to throw. That might be all for young Alex Reyes. We'll see. We've got Jerko, the bottom of the order. The Cardinals lineup says there are four spots before you get to the pitcher. Just in case with Bowman, maybe. Jerko waves at it. So Garen has come in. He's faced five Cardinals and struck out four of them. What's on tap? We head to Colorado. And Carlos Martinez makes the start tomorrow night. Last six starts, he's four and one with an ERA under three. Martinez and the Cardinals tomorrow night on Fox Sports Midwest will come your way at seven. What, what really makes for great viewing over the next two weeks because what other time have Cardinal fans really had a chance to watch the type of baseball that they're watching over the next two weeks and have really since this series began. 
Think about regular season play many times especially under Tony La Russa. The division was wrapped up. Just about this time of year. These games did not take on the importance that these are. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals Giants Mets they can't talk about the postseason now. They got to worry about things at hand. Here's a 1 0. Richick. One ball one strike. He is single to right and also grounded out to short. Now you don't see the shift here with Grichik. It's well, playing did, him to pull on the infield, but it, not as pronounced. He trickled one through on the right side. That's what that'll do. That, that was his last at bat, a single to right field. One ball, one strike on the Cardinal center fielder. <laughs> Left handers join Contos in the Giants bullpen. Colton Wong is at the on deck circle. Osich. One and two the count. Richick is swing and a miss. Great work by Garen out of the Giants bullpen. Strikes out five of the six that he's seen. Two nothing Cardinals. Time to stretch. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Michelob Ultra, brewed for those who go the extra mile. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Big crowd, 41,000 plus here today. Cardinal fans here in San Francisco, many make this trip every year. Come to this beautiful city. This year, four games set with the Giants, along with Tim McCarver and Jim Hayes. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Alex Reyes has been outstanding here today. Reyes has allowed just four hits. He has struck out five. Twice the Giants have had a runner at third and only one out and could not bring that runner home. Last inning alone, it was runners at second and third. Hunter Pence up, struck him out, walked Brandon Belt. And then Eduardo Nunez with the bases loaded flied out to left. So Mike Matheny and the Cardinals trying to earn a split. If they do so, then the Cardinals would be just one game back of the Giants here in the wild card race. A lot of fun. It's the bottom of the lineup here for San Francisco. Joe Panic will lead it off, followed by Trevor Brown. And then we'll have the pitcher spot. Corey Guerin, really nice work out of the Giants' bullpen. As he faces six and strikes out five. Fire! 
Panic has walked and also flied out to right. First pitch by Reyes a strike. Well, the one thing Reyes has to do in this inning, no walks. You got the bottom of the order up. Panic, a guy who leads the majors in striking out the fewest times. Ground ball. There's Colton Wong. One away. Zach Duke throwing in the Cardinals pen just in case. The BJC Healthcare difference maker this afternoon, Alex Reyes. Thus far, six and a third, four hits, no runs. He has walked two and struck out five. I think the question right now for the Cardinals the availability of Sung Wan Oh. You know, 20 plus pitches, two innings last night. Can you bring him back here today? I don't care. Bring him back. Hey, I'm with you. He's, he's the best they got, and he wants to do it. Remember for Reyes before that no walks you do not want to walk Trevor Brown eighth place hitter two balls no strikes he's 0 for 2 today hits it out to left backing up Moss shading from the sun on the track for out number two so two outs we'll see a pinch hitter here for Bruce Bochy's club. Yeah, I mean for young pitchers old pitchers you've got to have a sense of abandon at times and if the guy pops the ball out you haven't walked him you've got a two run lead know where you are that's very very important. Here's Jared Parker he's been up to the big leagues three different stints this year. Triple A affiliate is in Sacramento. Oh for his last seven five for his last thirty eight. I think also the question here now Tim is if he has an efficient seventh inning here his pitch count is only at 80. No. Bring him back out for the eighth. No. You go to the book. Uh, bull I go to I go to Zach Duke. Because you then you've got Denard Spann. And the switch hitting Angel Pagan and Brandon Crawford. To me that's the best chance to win. I don't bring him back out. One ball one strike. You know, Baseball is just an opinion. And I think you know if you go to Duke in the eighth that means Segrist is your guy in the ninth and maybe not. Oh you don't have the old question. Yeah. Yeah. Well put. But if you had it use him. Sleep in November. One two pitch. And he struck him out. Alex Reyes picks up a strikeout what could be his final pitch of the afternoon. Six strikeouts through seven.
into a home run inning. Thank you, Scotty. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Osich in the face, Colton Wong. Cardinals then will use a pinch hitter, so that'll be it for Alex Reyes. Kevin Segrist starts to throw in the pen. Numbers on Osich. He's very tough. Left-handed hitters, they're just 10 for 72, a 139 average against them this year. Wong is over two. He struck out and grounded out. Greets him with a line drive into right center. That ball is down all the way to the 421 sign. That'll be a triple for Colton Wong. The deepest part of this ballpark. That call was perfect, Dan, and I'll tell you, that's triple territory if if it's anything or or inside the park home run if you get a carom. Ichiro Suzuki did that a few years That's ago. That's right in the All Star game. I think it was 2008. That is an easy triple for Wong. You don't see too many stand up triples in the game anymore but this is one with Wong's speed and the placement of that ball and now you've got the Giants who have to bring the infield in no other choice six uh, triple for Colton Wong that ties him with Carpenter team high in that category our Chevy call to the pin Contos had been throwing a couple of times he'll face Johnny Peralta when we come back. Contos, he comes in probably for just one hitter, Johnny Peralta. Then you have the left handed hitting Carpenter on deck. Lopez, the lefty for the Giants, getting loose in their pen. Kevin Segris continues to throw in the Cardinals' bullpen, and now the infield is drawn in. Giants have been working Johnny Peralta away through the whole series. I wouldn't imagine they'll change now. First pitch to him. What a job by Alex Reyes. Peralta, the pinch hitter for Reyes. The seven innings this year, his longest outing in 2016. His previous high was six and two thirds back on the 4th of July, pitching for Memphis. Isn't that something? Mm. Big gap in left center. And the 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike. You know, it's something. I should have done as a player but never did but always a, as a broadcaster almost from day one check the outfielders had I done that as a hitter I have an idea about how a team's going to pitch me as an example as a left handed hitter if they shade toward uh, left center field I'm not going to get a breaking ball I'm probably going to get fastballs up and away to force me to hit the ball the other way. That's the case with Peralta here. Two and one. If they're, if Denard Span, if the key is the center fielder. If he's shaded toward right center field, then 
your pitching is going to pitch to your defense. There's not going to be a lot of slop drops or fastballs inside to Peralta. The 2 1 pitch to Peralta. Ground ball foul. I guess one of the points to that to that point is that the players can't see on the field what we see from up here. Two and two. And Peralta taps it foul. Is a great point. I mean, your center fielder will give it away to an extent. Yeah, he's the guy you key on. As you said, uh, room in left center field, that is exactly the case. So, off speed pitches are easier to pull, so you eliminate those. The slider is really a hard pitch, it's not an off speed pitch. So, it's either a fastball away or a slider away. Down is even two balls two strikes lead off triple by Wong stands at third nobody out. The two two is hit a ton out to deep left and it is off the wall. Johnny Peralta held to a single Wong can just walk home and with that it is now a three nothing St. Louis lead. That's a case of a professional hitter taking advantage of a hanger. That ball right in that sweet zone, right below the letters, and Wong scores a very important run. Here's the pitch one more time. And Peralta, as you said, Dan, he just hammered this ball right up in the happy zone. Jeremy Hazelbaker will pinch run for Peralta who picks up the RBI and this is the Chevy call to the pen Javier Lopez will come in to face Matt Carpenter still nobody out here at the top of the eighth and now a three run at St. Louis lead. From Aledmis Diaz, now an RBI off the bench for Peralta to bring in Wong. It's added up to a three run lead. Javier Leip, uh, Lopez is into the ball game to face Matt Carpenter. And then you may see Bruce Bochy go back to his bullpen. I would think he would with Diaz on deck. That's why the right hander's up. Carpenter is showing bunt and takes a ball. He's flied to center. A double 
into the right field corner scored a run back in the third struck out swinging in the fifth. Lopez already the third pitcher used in this inning alone by the Giants. Round ball that's hit to second. Out there on to first and out. Wow, what a turn by Brandon Crawford. Essentially flat footed. I was thinking the same thing. There was no coming across the bag. He didn't have time. We know Carpenter's not a fast runner, but watch, as Dan said, flat footed, a rocket to first. So Bruce Bochy, the uh, slow walk out to the mound. This will be another pitching change. And this will be another Chevy call to the pen. So Lopez gets the double play off the bat of Carpenter Diaz coming up 3 0. Joe Nathan, who's had an outstanding career, six time All Star. And Diaz, our Nissan drive of the game. This was back in the third inning. A lead miss with home run number 16. When Joe Nathan was signed, it was 1995. He was a shortstop. And now he's back where it all began for him with the San Francisco Giants. He's had two Tommy John surgeries, 16 year major league career. So the fourth pitcher fifth reliever overall used by San Francisco here today fourth in this inning. One ball and one strike he has a couple of hits today a double inside the third baseline back in the first a two run homer in the third and struck out against Corey Guerin that was in the six Guerin struck out five of the six he saw. To short, there's Crawford. He's some kind of player. He can pick it. Cardinals pick up a run. It's three nothing midway through eight.
Left-hander Kevin Segrist after seven innings by Alex Ray is here today. The game he goes deepest in this year is one of the biggest games of the year, and he does it at the major league level. Alex Reyes, tremendous stuff. Four hits allowed, no runs in seven innings of work. So Segrist has the top of the lineup, Denard Spann, the switch hitting Angel Pagan, and Brandon Crawford. It's funny how the how delicate the lineup can be later in the game when you have a lead and you're going for defense over offense. But had that double play not been turned by the Giants, then Brandon Moss would have been the hitter. And then you can make the double switch. You can bring Segrist in, put him in the three hole, and then have Tommy Pham, Pham your best defender, in left field. But Great because point. because Moss is leading off, he can't do that. Right. Span a base hit to right. Fly to center and also struck out. Quickly, no balls and two strikes. Kevin has really turned out to be one of the better, more reliable bridgemen, if you will, in baseball to get to your closer. Yes, he has. He could be a closer. Here's an 0-2 pitch to Span. Oh, and two, nothing too good. It's like a breaking ball away. When he's thrown that breaking ball primarily against the lefties, occasionally against the right handed batter. Very occasionally. Bowman and Duke trotting down to the Cardinals bullpen just in case. Another breaking ball from Segrist. Kevin knocks it down, has time, underhands for the outs. Skate save. Kick save and a beauty. <laughs> Yet another 1 3 put out. There's no doubt that was by design by Kevin Segrist. Yeah. Too. Knock that down with a leg. Well, he's a great hockey fan. He would he would love the skate save comparison <laughs> from Buffalo. Huge Sabres fan. Hard to believe hockey's right around the corner. Huh? Certainly is. <laughs> When's uh, when is spring training for the Blues? October 12th. October is the first 12th. game. Oh, that's first game. Yeah. Regular season game. Regular How season. About that. Wow. The training camp fires up, uh, I think, within the week. One out, no balls and a strike on Angel Pagan. Pagan out to left in a base hit. His first hit of the ball game. Watch Molina. Molina wants it away. It was away, but not quite far enough. Almost where he wanted it. Maybe an inch or two in. A little up. And now it's Crawford who has picked up an infield hit back in the sixth. Fly to center, popped out to short. Batting third in this lineup. Remember when he first came up, he'd be your eighth place hitter. Times have changed. Talking during the break, he is one of the best all around shortstops now in the game. Defense and what he does at the plate. 
No walks if you're Kevin Seegers. You don't want to walk hitters. Give that guy on deck a chance to hit with runners in scoring position. One ball, one strike. Bowman is up for the third time, second time for Duke. And Sumuano oh is stretching in the dugout. Good fastball right on the corner. This freezes Crawford. Breaking ball and struck him out. First strikeout for Kevin Segrist, and there's two away. Very effective curve out of the strike zone, and Crawford bit. Giants hitters going well. That doesn't happen, but they're not going well, and the Cardinals trying to keep it that way for the next four outs. Hunter Pence, 0 for 3, couple of the strikeouts today. He came up with runners at second and third, one of the key at bats that Reyes had in facing the Giants and struck him out. That was only one out back in the sixth as Pence takes a ball in. Giants twice in this game had a runner at third, less than two outs, and did not score. Two balls, no strikes. Brandon Belt at the on deck circle. Two and one. Two two pitch. Ground ball. Diaz steps on the bag and Segrist, a scoreless bottom of the eighth. We head to the ninth. Cardinals on top, three nothing.
Okert. Bruce Bochy used four relievers to get three outs in the eighth. Numbers on Okert, third time with the Giants this year. Lefties at Sacramento, the AAA affiliate of the Giants, hit just 235 against Okert this season. Matt Kane is throwing in the pen for the Giants, the right hander, former starter. And it's one ball, one strike on Brandon Moss. So Okert could be in for one hitter, then right back to the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Three infielders on the right side. Sung Wan O. Oh. Starts to play catch in the Cardinals pen. The Giants will have Belt, Nunez, and Panic looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. The 2 1. 2 and 2. <laughs> 2 2 pitch to Moss. Hits it the other way and a base hit. Bruce Bochy will hop out of the dugout and he'll make another pitching change. Baseball is finding that there are a lot of pitchers who don't like that shift and that's one of the reasons. <laughs> we'll step aside another pitching change coming up. Relief outing in his 12 year career for Matt Kane here this afternoon was reinstated from the DL back on uh, September 2nd. Tremendous career as a starter. Our score 3 0, and Kane is in to face Steven Piscotti after the base hit by Moss. Dan, you and I are both surprised that Tommy Pham has not reared his head and gone out to pinch run for Brandon Moss. Get the so, speed and the defense. Yeah, the stolen base last night, such a vital play in that ninth inning for the Cardinals. Tommy Pham scoring the the tying run, but no Pham. Matt Kane has been a part of uh, all three world championships for the San Francisco Giants and a check on Moss. Now, in fairness to Mike Matheny, we don't know whether something happened to Pham last night. But there was nothing noticeable in the play of that ninth inning. That showed he was hurt. A fastball that's taken high. Remember, Kane threw a perfect game back in 2012. First perfect game in Giants history. That was against Houston. 
Gregor Blanco that unbelievable catch in right center to keep it alive. Nowhere near the plate with the first three pitches to Stephen Piscotti. Three and one. And Stephen Piscotti, who has been handled well by giant pitchers throughout this series, licking his chops right now because he's going to get a fastball. High strike, three and two. Scotty a check swing and he went strikeout. So Matt Kane records the first out here in the top of the night. Actually ball four but Steven could not lay off and we will reiterate what we said earlier. We can't uh, remember a four game series. Or four in a row where Steven Piscotti has looked this bad with the bat. Sergio Romo starts to throw in the pen for the Giants. Yadier Molina, one for three today. The Cardinals with eight hits. Runner goes, hit to the right side, and a base hit. Moss had to avoid the baseball. Panic going to cover the bag and perfectly placed off the bat of Molina. George Kissel used to say instead of vacating your position on a hit and run come forward and don't break to the bag when you break the bag you vacate your position you can see Moss as Dan said avoiding the ball but that's a way if you come in you get closer to second base and then if the ball's hit to you you make the play but it's something to keep in mind when you see a hit and run play at a ballpark sure. If he does that, he might make that play. Yeah. Wasn't hit very hard. And now it's Jed Jerko, who is over three. It's easy to remember, Dan, that by saying come in first and then over, not over first. One-o -oh pitch. Cardinals would love to see this as a non save situation. To get to that point, you may not see O. Bowman joins O again, so that's the third time he's been up. It makes sense. If they have a four run lead, Bowman's the pitcher. A three run lead, O's the pitcher. Breaking ball of beauty. One ball and two strikes. Kane's a three time all star. Missed 94 games last year. In the dirt, kept in front. Molina wants to get in a rundown. Oh boy. He has not been called out. Now he is. They ran out of the baseline. You gotta say, where is Yachty going? There's one out. Sacrifice flies taken away. I don't know. But clearly he's trying to get in a rundown, but but why? With yeah. two outs, you can with understand out, yeah. it. But with one out, you still got a chance for a sack fly and you score a cheap run. I have no idea. Two two pitch and the threat is through Jericho not happy at all slams his bat and his helmet we head to the bottom of the night.
It's presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. So with a three-run lead, it's our Chevy call to the pen. It is indeed Sung Wan Oh. And he'll try to close it out. Oh, with two innings last night, he gave up two singles after retiring the first five Giants to face him. Then he got the pop-up by Connor Gillespie as a pinch hitter. And you hope the base running mistake doesn't come back on on the Cardinals. That is really true with the runner on at first and third or runners on at first and third. With two outs you could understand Molina breaking but not with one out. Brandon Belt leads it off in the first pitch is swung on and missed underway here in the bottom of the ninth. Belt today with a walk he is grounded out and struck out. Two strikes. Some guys talk bravado and say I want to pitch every day. Oh talks bravado and means it. Here's a one two in the dirt two balls two strikes what a difference 24 hours can make Cardinals had nothing going in that ninth inning last night and a strikeout of belt they come back and win the game last night and behind the rookie Alex Reyes they're two outs away from splitting this series and being one game back of the Giants. A Budweiser player of the game Alex Reyes. He was tremendous. Every right to be the Budweiser player of the game today. Eduardo Nunez. Strike one. Strike two. Nunez looking out at O, and O even realizes he got away with a hanger yeah. there. Sure did. Yeah. Play on his anxiety. Throw the slider low and away. Away, away, away. Coming inside. Now away. Got away with that pitch, too. Yes, he did. Colton Wong with it. Two down. So Hunter Pence, Madison Bumgarner look on, and now the Giants down to their final out. The Cardinals win. They'd be two back. Of the Mets for the top wild card spot, one back is San Francisco for the final spot. Madison Bumgarner and Hunter Pence realizing how cruel the game of baseball is at times. Man, oh man. Pitch taken high by Joe Panic. The 1 0. One ball, one strike. Thing you love about O, more times than not, too, Tim, it's efficient. It's strike one. He's ahead in the count. Yes. Here's a 1 1 pitch. The fans applauding the individual that made a great play on that foul ball. Three and one. No walks. And who knows that?
one of San Francisco's finest. Hat turned into a glove. 3 1 pitch. Now 3 and 2. The Giants down to their final strike. Oh, trying to have a 1 2 3 bottom of the ninth. 3 2 pitch. Popped up. And this should do it. Into right field. The Cardinals drop the first two. They win the next two. They will leave San Francisco one game back of the Giants in the wild card. We toyed with it earlier in the game that the Cardinals could win this game today because of what they did in the ninth inning last night. And I believe that that's true. The pitching of Alex Reyes, tremendous. And the Cardinals now just one game back of San Francisco for that final spot in the wild card. A 1 2 3 by 0. Post game show is next.